Hey everybody, welcome to Alum House Sound. My name is Dave and today we're going to talk about connecting a Behringer wing to the X32 so that you have a front of house console as well as a full broadcast console. All right, so this video we're gonna dive in and talk about all of the settings that you need to do to make sure that these connections work properly and you get signal, the right signal, from your Behringer wing to your X32. So a lot of folks have been running the X32 for years. They've got a stage rack set up where you've got, uh, you've got an, a stage box with all of your inputs plugged in. You're running Cat5 uh, into the X32, and that would come in on AES-50A, and maybe that's how you've been running. Uh, you can also go out AES-50B and go into a console, and let me say that this will work even if you have two X32s. It doesn't have to be a wing and an X32, but the common thing that I'm seeing right now is a lot of people are upgrading from the X32. They're upgrading to a Behringer wing for their front of house console, their main rig. And so now you're gonna have AES-50A, your stage box, sending signal into the wing. And then you've got three AES-50 slots on the back of the wing. And what we can do is, uh, in this example, I'm gonna take AES-50B, on the back of the wing. We're gonna route signal out through a, a Cat5 cable and into AES-50A on the X32. Now I know it's a lot of AES-50s and A's and B's, but we're just gonna walk through it on these consoles right behind me. Uh, it's just stacked and tiered in, in my studio here because I just kind of flip whichever one I'm using and put it up top, but we're gonna use both of them today. So we'll compact the space and try and make it uh, usable for you, but you'll get the idea. Hopefully this is helpful. Hey, if you're interested in more information like this, go ahead and hit the uh, the subscribe button and, and you know maybe just be generous and hit the like button too. Uh, but we'll dive into these settings right now and get you on the road. All right, so we're out here in the studio and what we have is the computer, which is run Studio One uh, Pro, and that's got my tracks on it. Now those tracks are running down into the wing as my uh, front of house console at the bottom there. And we'll take a look at those settings. You can see the meters are metering there on the left hand side. And that's because the inputs are working. And then what we're going to do is set up the X32 as our uh, broadcast console. So we're going to do the settings on the wing uh, to the X32. What are the settings on the X32 to go ahead and get your broadcast functioning? So normally you would have your, your stage inputs coming into the wing, but we're just using the tracks as a good example here. So let's go ahead and dive into the settings on each console and get everything squared away. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is come into the setup window here, and we are going to find the clock source. And the clock source normally is set to internal, but we wanna come down and select AES-50A. I have the Cat5 cable running from the wing out AES-50B coming into AES-50A on this X32 console. So immediately now that I've selected that, I can see up top here, it does say wing in the top, and so it's recognized that as the main console and you saw everything on the board kind of flick, flicker once, and that uh, that is when it's adjusting the clock source. Now, that's the first step. The next thing we need to do is come over to routing, and we wanna make sure that we're selecting AES-50A as our inputs. Now, if this console was your main console already for front of house, uh, and you're just upgrading the wing in this place, then they might already be set if, at AES-50A if you've got a stage box. So for me, I'm gonna go, I've been doing stuff with the card. I'm just gonna jump back here to play. And you can see that AES-50A are now my inputs. So this console now is set up. You can even see the connected devices here in the top right. It does show that a wing is connected there. So that's, that's it for this part. The only other thing we wanna consider is how are you getting your main mix now? Cause you get to mix a main mix on this and send that main mix out to say some studio monitors like I have here in the studio, but you can also send it out, uh, the main mix out to your broadcast. So you wanna think about your routing and how you send that out. 
typically for me, I'm using a post fader mix bus. So my mix bus is set up to go out my console. You wanna think about, do you need to route it back to the wing to be able to uh, send it from there to get to your, your broadcast area? Anyway, we're not gonna cover that right now because uh, those are different things to think about and different for everyone's situation but we do want to go ahead and think about that in terms of routing. All right, so let's take a look at the wing now. We've got a couple different settings that we need to do. Uh, so we've got the screen here. This is just me looking at my kick channel, but we're gonna come into routing. So if I push routing, uh, you've got uh, channels. You've got three different options up here, which you can hit on touchscreen, channels, then sources and outputs. You can also just push the routing button again, and that's gonna go to sources and then we're gonna to go to outputs. That's what we wanna do, we wanna to go to outputs. You can see in the bottom left corner that it does recognize we have an X32 selected. And so what we wanna do is come up, remember we're selected in AES50B is what we're pushing stuff out of. So uh, instead of A, we're gonna to go to AES50B. And then on the right hand side, we wanna select our source. Now our source, the signal right now is coming from USB. So what I would do is I would come down, I would find my USB audio, and then the last thing I need to do uh, to be able to, to set these up, you can see all my inputs are, are metering there on the right, but we gotta unlock this. So we're gonna hit that button there and unlock. So now we've selected one, we can hit one for kick, two, three, four, um, and so now if we come up and we look at the X32, now we can see that we have one, two, three, and four are metering. So you can go ahead and repeat that process for all of your uh, inputs to go out. If you've got 32 coming in, you can do 32 going out. Obviously, if you have to do any groups and such, then that's gonna be something different. And you're probably not coming from USB audio. You would probably be coming from AES-50A from a stage box that comes into the wing, and then you're sending those inputs out of the wing and into the X32. All right, so now you can see we've got our inputs coming in. And if I go ahead and do this little trick on the compact, if you push down layer one and two at the same time, it will set up this to just be 16 channels. So this is now one through 16. You could do nine through 24 or 17 to 32 uh, and just get a, a better, bigger picture. But for me, 16 inputs, we can see that we've got some metering over here, my vocals, we've got uh, electric guitar, bass guitar. Uh, anyway, drums are coming in. So we've got all of our channels coming in. We could go ahead and build a mix and then we can turn it up. And if we had our monitors on, we'd be able to hear that coming out of our monitors. Now, obviously you, uh, you've got the ability, like I said, to listen to uh, this mix out of studio monitors coming out of the monitor output on this console. And that would give you the opportunity to have solo functionality, use the mono versus stereo button, which I'm a huge proponent of, uh, and all the other features that come with studio monitors, as opposed to just listening to a main mix. All right, well, that's it. So there's not too many things to do. Obviously, there are some more efficient ways to route your inputs on the wing. There's a little plus one button or minus one button that you can see um, in the top left boxes for your inputs, but you can figure that out if you've been with the wing for uh, any length of time. Hey, do me a favor, go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button. I really appreciate that. That helps the video get uh, more visibility and help more people just like yourself. If you've got questions, go ahead and leave those in the comment section down below. I'm always answering questions. And if you need one-on-one -on -one help, if you need more specific help with your set up in your scenario, go ahead and find the uh, the website right here. Uh, that's going to get you the ability to fill out the contact card and that comes directly to me. We can start a conversation outside of YouTube. Well, that's it. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.